I've developed the perfect template for you to develop short stories, whether you're using AI or not, and do it in a way where you can scale it and you can do so efficiently in a way that is also both formulaic but also unique enough that every single short story that you create will be something new and different. My name is Jason. I'm the nerdy novelist. For the past six years or so, I've been reading every single book on story structure that I can get my hands on, including books about short story structure for short stories. It so happens that short stories are one of those things that are more versatile than other forms. Like a novel is gonna be a lot more structured than a short story has to be. There's much more room for experimentation. That said, if you want a really punchy short story that immediately grabs readers and keeps them reading to the end in a single sitting, and at the end leaves them feeling amazing, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to this video. Now I've written a book called The Plot Module, which goes through the story structure of a large novel, uh, around 40 chapters or so. But obviously we're not gonna do 40 chapters in a short story, so we're only gonna be looking at a four chapter template. This model I developed and I call it basically the plot module for short stories specifically. And it's a tool that will allow you to create uh, as many short stories as you want them quickly and efficiently using the same story structure method, but across any wide range of stories that you could think of. So let's dive into the document and you can see for yourself. Right here, I have, of course, it's called the four chapters short story template. And just as a caveat here, this was heavily influenced by the work of Lester Dent. Lester Dent was one of the most influential pulp writers back in the early 20th century. He is probably most well known for inventing the character Doc Savage, who was one of the most popular characters in that era of the pulps. And he basically had a formula and it worked for him and it worked really well. And so he is my biggest inspiration for this thing. I have added a little bit of my own flair to it based on what I have learned studying story structure for years and working at Kindlepreneur and writing my book and all of that. So there are a couple of elements to short stories that are unique. First of all, they are more versatile, like I said, meaning you can experiment more and you don't have to adhere to the template as much as I would recommend for the novella template that I made or the novel template that I made. But just because you can experiment more doesn't necessarily mean that those experiments are going to be successful. But because they're short fiction, it's OK to, you know, try some different things. You're going to have some duds, but you might have some winners as well. And you'll learn a lot in the process. So even though you do have this template to start from, I would recommend and maybe write a few short stories with the template and then try a few different things. Try experimenting, try other things that you might not have heard of in this template. Maybe something somebody else told you. Uh, maybe just, you know, your own thing. You do whatever you want. Short stories, relatively low risk to write one, uh, even if it's experimental. And they're one of the best ways to learn how to tell stories in the first place. So definitely give it a shot. Uh, short stories usually have a narrow focus, only focusing on one character or conflict. Uh, they revolve around a single choice or question, and the making of that choice counts as the character arc for the protagonist. So this is something that I've learned over the years. Most good stories have a character that goes through a transformation. Uh, this is what we call the character arc. And for a short story, there isn't much room to actually show change happening. And so because of that, we boil it down to what is the essential element of a positive or negative change. It usually revolves around a single thing, a choice that the character makes. And so I call this the minimum viable character arc, right? It's a choice, maybe something that they are dealing with at the beginning of the novel, something they're struggling with. The choice might be obvious, but they don't want to take it for whatever reason. And then by the end of the short story, they will have made their choice for positive or negative outcomes. And much of the short story will center around the pressures and the conflict forcing the character to make that choice. And then the last thing that we need to know about short stories is because they are brief, every sentence counts. So this is definitely a case where you don't want to have a whole lot of fluff in your book. You want every sentence to mean what it means and to not use more words to convey that meaning than you would use in a novel or something like that. So trimming sentences becomes important. Trimming scenes and character details and everything all becomes much more important. Do not have more in your chapters than you absolutely need to have. And with that, let's get into the four chapters. 
Now, this template that you're looking at right now, you can actually get this for free. All you have to do is go sign up for my free group. There's a link down below where you can get access to that. You join the group. There's a start here course in there with some bonuses. And in those bonuses, you will find this cheat sheet for novellas and short stories. I also have a cheat sheet for my plot module, the 40 chapter version. So you'll essentially get all of my templates for the uh, novels, novellas, and short stories. Now, if you want to take things even further, one of the things that I offer is a paid group called the Story Hacker Gold membership. And in that group, what we do is we come together weekly. I go have a weekly class every week and we talk about what's on the cutting edge of AI that week, as well as other things like this tool. I presented this to them first before I brought it to the free group. Also, you know, a lot of people who are using AI to write their books really don't understand what makes AI obvious in the text and what makes good prose. And so to help you learn those things, we have a developmental editor in there that does a class every week. We also have a guy doing AI art. So there's a whole lot of stuff in there that you will learn and be really on the cutting edge of all of this developing technology by joining us for the paid membership. So go check that out. It's also down below and I will hopefully see you there. All right, so getting into the chapter by chapter template here for the short story, uh, we wanna introduce the protagonist and put them in trouble immediately. So this is the very start of the story. We get to know the protagonist immediately and they are in a lot of trouble. And we have to get to this very, very quickly. This is essentially the inciting incident right up front because uh, we don't have a lot of time with this character. So by putting them in trouble immediately, we can immediately get into their head and empathize with them because we as humans tend to empathize with people who are in trouble. Uh, so we put them in trouble. Uh, the antagonist is revealed. This could be literally or figuratively. The protagonist tries to resolve the trouble. And this section, this chapter ends with an unexpected twist or a mystery that complicates the plot and or raises the stakes. Uh, likewise, the protagonist is struggling with a choice, one that is thematically or directly linked to the conflict. The decision they eventually make around this choice will eventually determine how the short story resolves itself. So there's something that they're struggling with, something that's kind of getting in the way of them doing the things that are necessary to fully resolve the trouble that they are in. And like I said, this ends with an unexpected twist, something that kind of heightens the stakes and puts them in even more trouble than before. And so... That moves us into chapter two, The Trouble, right? The protagonist makes progress, but has a lot of obstacles to overcome. Things are just not looking good. They try to solve the problems, but all attempts make the situation worse. And again, remember, you don't have a whole lot of time to get into this, so you've really got to show them trying to work on this problem. Uh, and it says problems here, but you might not have time to show multiple problems. It might just be one big thing that is just getting worse and worse. Uh, the protagonist is beaten physically or emotionally, and it ends with another complication. Just when things seem like they couldn't get any worse, they do. This is one of the best pieces of, of writing advice that I was ever given. It's put your protagonist into a troublesome situation. Think of the worst possible thing that could happen to that protagonist and then do that thing to them. It's a good thing that these characters aren't real because if they were, they would probably want to murder us in our sleep. <laughs> but anyway, just when things couldn't get any worse, uh, you make them worse for your hero. So in chapter three, there's the twist, right? There's a surprising twist or revelation that changes the protagonist's understanding of the conflict. Uh, so usually this is a good time to, to have some kind of plot twist that just changes the game. Right now we've been working against the trouble and it's just like, you're pushing against the conflict and pushing and pushing and pushing. And then you find out that there's something else coming from over here and totally surprising you and gut punching you in a different way. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, but the idea behind a plot twist is there's conflict that you didn't see coming, but looking back on it was inevitable. And that conflict comes uh, just from the sidelines and really give your protagonist a hard time. Uh, the protagonist tries once again to confront the antagonist, and at first it seems like they've succeeded. So they are working uh, to resolve the problems that they're in. But the antagonist wins and the protagonist falls right into their trap. So one of the plot twists that you could have is something that the antagonist had planned and that the protagonist just falls right into, like it says, uh, falls into a trap. That's a good example of a plot twist you could have here. And then it ends with the protagonist's worst moment so far. So in 
the other story structures that I've talked about, this is the all is lost moment. It's one of the most crucial moments in any story. Uh, you'll notice it's in the short story template, novella template, and the full novel template. It's an important moment. So having that worst moment is kind of where you end chapter three about the twist here. And then chapter four is the epiphany. Okay. The protagonist makes a discovery either externally or internally that gives them an epiphany. So this can be a moment of self-reflection, something that happens that gives them information that they need, that they have this light bulb moment. In other story structures that I've talked about, I call this the drop. It's a sort of calm before the storm where the protagonist has this epiphany that shows them the way to go. The epiphany gives them clarity on the choice that they've been debating. So this decision that they've been dealing with is given that clarity by the epiphany. And then armed with this new clarity, they once again confront the antagonist and defeat them. So they're able to use this decision to really further their goals. And it is the final missing piece to actually help them succeed. Uh, then you just want to wrap up any final narrative threads. Again, you don't have too much time. So first of all, don't introduce too many narrative threads to begin with. And those that you do have want to wrap them up and then end with a powerful final image that presents a satisfying conclusion. Okay. This can be a literal image. Think of it like you're planning out the shots of a movie. What's the final shot of that movie going to be? And how is it going to represent the choice that the character just made? and the impact that it had and how they have changed even across the short four chapters here. And that is the short story template. So because this channel is focused heavily on AI, I wanna go ahead and demonstrate what this would look like if I wanted to plot a short story using AI. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take this entire template here and copy it. And for purposes of demonstration today, I'm gonna to show you this in Claude. So far, I found that as of this recording, 3.7 Sonnet is hands down the best model for outlining stories. None of the others even come close. 3.7 Sonnet, for whatever reason, it understands the logical coherency of a story and what makes a natural sounding story as opposed to stuff that just doesn't make sense. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a two-part prompt here. I'm gonna say, here is a template for a short story structure that I want to use. And then I'll just, you know, I don't need it to really respond to me. I could just say, respond to me with, I read this or something like that. But I'm gonna say, give me a summary of all four chapters, just so it kind of like thinks through them. And then I input the template there and that's part of the prompt number one. And just because I don't feel like coming up with a short story idea here on the spot, I'm just gonna go to ChatGPT in a separate browser and say, give me three short story ideas. Uh, we'll say in the supernatural thriller genre. Oh, this is actually pretty good. The Vanishing Hour, every night at exactly 3.12 a.m. Time stops for everyone. I feel like that's probably a cliche of some kind. We're pulling from another story, uh, but I like it. Except for Ethan. At first, he enjoys the eerie stillness, exploring a frozen world where nothing moves, but then he starts seeing shadows that do move, figures whispering his name. As the night progresses, he realizes they are trying to pull him into this realm, and one night, time might not restart for him. So we're just going to use this, and I'm going to come here into Claude and say, uh, using the following story idea, give me a full outline of the short story given the template to follow. Don't think I worded that the best, but uh, we'll just run with it. It'll get the idea. Uh, so I put that synopsis in there, and here we go, outlining chapter one. And look at how much detail it's giving me in each of these. So Ethan wakes up at precisely 3.12 a.m. to find the world completely frozen, his digital clock stuck, water droplets suspended in air. Oh, that's interesting. And his cat mid-leap onto his bed. At first confused and terrified, he experiments and discovers that only he can move while everything else remains completely still. Ethan ventures outside to his neighborhood, enjoying the surreal beauty of the frozen world, a car suspended mid-turn, snowflakes hanging in the air like stars. He starts using these frozen hours to his advantage, reading books in the closed library, exploring places normally off limits, and even rearranging things to 
create harmless pranks when time resumes. I love this. This is like, see what I mean? 3.7 Sauna is just really good. Twist. On the seventh night, while exploring a local park, Ethan sees movement in the shadows, something that shouldn't be possible in this frozen time. The shadows whisper his name and quickly vanish. Ethan's choice begins to form. Should he continue exploring these frozen moments, potentially connecting with whatever else exists in this uh, suspended reality, or should he try to avoid these encounters and focus on returning to normal life? Uh, I wouldn't say this is the best choice. A choice is usually something that's thematically linked, you know, but that was something they were dealing with beforehand. So I would probably change this about the story, but all in all, like really great work on Claude's part. And, you know, I'll go ahead. I'll just pause right here on chapter two. So you can pause the video if you want to read it and then here for chapter three and then here for chapter four. All in all, really great uh, story. And I was starting to get interested in it until we got to that choice, which I think needs a little work. But one of the cool things about Claude is I can just give it feedback and it can iterate and improve on things. So this was a really great start. And if you want to do things with AI, this is the way I would go about it, especially for short stories where the outlines are relatively simple. AI can handle that a little bit better uh, rather than uh, the other option, which is to go chapter by chapter and kind of figure things out as you go. So keep that in mind. And uh, so like I said, you can get this in the novella template that comes with it uh, just right in the free group that you can find below. Uh, and if you want to take things to the next level, go ahead and consider the paid membership as well. And if you want to know more about the plot module for the entire book, if you want to write entire books with this method of going chapter by chapter, uh, you can check out my book, The Plot Module, or you can check out this video that I'll show you right here, which goes a little bit more into depth into those 40 chapters. And I'll see you there.